Hi, my name is Owen Fitzpatrick and I've been asked since the last time to do another video which where I use lots of language patterns. So I'm just going to give you a demonstration of language patterns. Um, again, hopefully helping you to become more effective at using language patterns. So as you start to look at what it is that I'm doing, I want you to notice the language that I'm using because the language that I'm using and everything that I'm saying is directly connecting with whatever it is that I want you to be able to do. Now the first part is I could say what's already true for you because you're sitting there and listening to me as I'm using language patterns. Now as you notice that, you'll notice that I'm using what we call truisms. A truism is a true statement that I'm saying that I know is true for you. Now if it's not true for you, it's not a truism for you. So I'm not talking about truism in the linguistic sense, I'm tr talking about a truism in the NLP sense. So in the NLP sense, the senses that you're using might be the visual, auditory, kinesthetic sense, which is what you see, what you hear, what you feel. Now as you look forward to the future and you see yourself using these language patterns in a way where you can get a glimpse and get a glance of how great it will look, the more that you can see a vision of yourself using these language patterns. Now as you hear yourself beginning to say them, as you tell yourself what it is that you need to hear and you start to sound them out and speak with more resonance, you'll start to find yourself resonating with exactly what language patterns you need to talk about. You can also get the feeling for it. You can start to get to grips and grasp these language patterns so you can give them to other people and you get a hold of them and a handle of exactly how you need to, how much effort you need to give in order for you to do the language patterns effectively. So whether you're using the visual, auditory, or kinesthetic senses or all of them at the same time, the sense that you can make inside your head is to begin to look forward to, as soon as you connect with a person in terms of by using truisms, the next step is to be able to start to build the suggestion that you want. Lots of ways to do this. You could use embedded commands which is allowing you to be able to embed a command in a larger sentence. You don't need to use negative commands because there's no need to really master the art of being able to take on board when you tell a person not to do something, they'll actually do it. There's also an idea where you can think about can you use conversational postulates, which again is a form of asking a question but you're really getting a person to do a particular thing. Can you imagine how great that would be? Will you think about the consequences of that, the benefits of that? Could you uh, think or consider in your mind the option of you being able to do this naturally easily? Wouldn't it be great? You can also use what we call tag questions, can't you? You will be able to get results with them, won't you? Because you are going to be able to do this, aren't you? And you see when you use a tag question by negating the end or by making it so that it starts negative then finishes positive or starts positive and finishes negative, what that invariably allows you to do is it allows you to be able to make it so that even if you're dealing with someone who necessarily will go against the grain, it locks in the particular suggestion which makes it much more powerful. Now as well as that, you can also give them different forms of suggestions in the form of quotes. As I was saying earlier to you, you will practice and master all these language patterns. You just need to make sure that you're going over them and using them in lots of different contexts. The more that you do, the better you'll get. The better you'll get, the more easy it'll be for you to do it in the future. So as well as using quotes, you don't have to use famous people's quotes, but as Einstein once said, it's really important for you to practice this stuff. Now, whether or not you're using quotes, you can also use what we call reality violations, sometimes called selection restriction violations. My God, that's a heavy name. Did you get it? Because a reality violation means a heavy name. But what you need to do is you need to be able to let yourself violate reality. Now by violating reality, I simply mean you're using a metaphor, a concept, that necessarily you're giving attributes to a quality that doesn't possess those attributes. Because these language patterns want you to use them. They're delighted, they're happy, they're in their element when they're being used. But of course they can't be in their element because they're not a real thing with emotions and feelings and thinking that way. So therefore by violating it, it forces the other person to go inside their mind and take what a reality violation is and give it a personality. Now the more that you begin to start to realize that all of this is leading towards another really powerful uh, way of using language, which is the powerful form of presuppositions. What is a presupposition? It's whenever you assume something is true. The words before, during, after assume something is true in time. If you say for a second or another, it assumes something's true in order. If you say this is true and this is true, or uh, whether or not you feel good or great, you're assuming one or the other. If you allow yourself to be able to make it so that you use the words like realize, notice, become aware of, discover, understand, all of those assume whatever you're saying after it because again you're talking about the awareness of it. If for example you're talking about the commentary that you make at something, you say fortunately, happily, luckily, obviously, clearly, evidently, all of that assumes whatever comes after it as well. And if you say how easy it is, how quick it is, how effortless it is, even more effectively, all of those are natural descriptive presuppositions. They're all examples of it. But again, instead of saying something potentially contentiously, you're arguing the point by assuming a certain idea and misdirecting the attention so that you're instead directing their idea so that you're getting the message across in a much more unconscious, much more subtle way.
So before you realize how easy it is to notice yourself beginning to start to do this, whether or not you notice it straight away or in a little while, whether or not you do it amazingly or brilliantly, either way, the more that you become aware of the fact that this is something that you can start to improve and get better at, the more easy it'll be for you to feel really good about your opportunities to be able to use language effectively. The more that you leave back behind you what was in the past, the more you can move forward to the future and you can start to use these uh, situations and skills and ideas and tools and tricks and techniques right now in the present as you move into the future. Because regardless of the situation you're in, as you practice these skills and continue to practice these skills and make sure that you become a legendary, excellent, exquisite, brilliant user of these skills, naturally and effortlessly and automatically, you'll find yourself beginning to do it without even thinking. So it'll become a natural, automatic part of the way in which you think, the way in which you feel. First step then will be, where are you going? What do you need to do? What message do you need to communicate with? You need to connect with them, with where they are, and then use those language patterns to make a real difference. Now, a lot of times people will tell you never use but, but that's because they don't understand the power of the word but, because the word but is a pivot. It allows you to focus attention a lot of times on what comes after it. Doesn't necessarily mean that you'll always be taking attention away from what comes before it. It really depends on how you say the word but. But I'm very sure that if you practice these skills and you start to master all of the language patterns you've been learning from this particular video and learning from the studies that you've been engaging with NLP, you'll find yourself being able to be really exquisite with the language that you use. For now, I'm Owen Fitzpatrick. Hope you found this useful.